All right, continuing right along. So let's go ahead and review trailing closures. Now, trailing closures are really similar to the regular closures. The thing that makes them different though is that if you need to pass a long closure expression as the function's like final argument, then what you can do is you can write a trailing closure. And really all a trailing closure is is a closure that's written after and outside of the function's parameters, so outside of the parentheses of that function that it supports. So the basic syntax, um, first let's go ahead and create a function. I'm gonna do it up, up here. So we're gonna create a function that needs a closure to support it. So we have um, function some function that takes a, a closure and we're gonna do some parentheses and this is actually gonna return a void just to make it easier. And inside these parentheses we're gonna head it and do um, one parameter which is just gonna be a closure. And go ahead and close it out. Sorry, let's go ahead and actually do the closure inside. This function won't return anything at all. And so in here, what you do is you write you know, the function's body, whatever that, that function might do. All right, so the syntax. So basically what we usually have done is we would write out the function here and then inside we would have some code for our closure. Let's just go ahead and say here is the closure body and inside is our curly brackets. All right, so one thing I definitely want to mention here is that uh, between Swift 2 and Swift 3, um, if you had one parameter or the first parameter, even if it was the only parameter, you usually didn't have to enter in the label, but with Swift 3 you do. So um, let's go ahead and insert that. So make sure when you're working with closures or parameters, you'll see this come up a lot of times where it will ask you to include the first parameters label, which is pretty nifty, um, but sometimes it can error out too, <laughs> which can make it kind of um, frustrating to say the least. So actually what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use different comments here so we can see, oh, okay, there we go. <laughs> Don't know why I was airing out. We just didn't like what I did. Okay, so here's the usual closure syntax that we're used to see. So this is um, without a trailing closure. Just move this here. And then the next one will be with a trailing closure. So again, we'll just use our function that we did above. And what we're going to do is we're going to just close out the parentheses here and then do a curly brackets after. And this is what I mean by trailing closure, is that the closure appears after the Basically, it's written after and outside of, of, of the parentheses, whereas above here, the closure was actually inside of the parentheses. All right, so I guess the best way to show you an example is just to do it. Um, it'll, it'll make a lot more sense. So this example I'm going to do is it's going to be a function that will return a sum of numbers. Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to set the starting number and have it accept a closure that allows it to do some computation. So I'm going to name this function sum. I'm going to create a couple of 
parameters. So we're going to do our beginning number, and that's going to be integer, our ending number, which is also going to be integer, and then we're going to do a closure. And I'm just doing closure on, so it's just really clear <laughs> what I'm doing. Okay, and so this closure will accept an integer, and it will return an integer. Okay, and then our function will return the, the result, or the sum of numbers that we specify. So this, this function will return an int as well. Okay, so uh, the first thing I want to do is I want to create a variable, which is for, I'm just doing running total. That's, I'm going to have it equal to zero, so I don't have to specify its type, because it will infer it. Then I'm going to do a for loop, where it's going to take in, um, basically it's going to loop through and do the sum. So for i and I'm going to have it go loop through to the end number. And then what I want to do is I want it to add it to the running total. And this is where we bring our closure on because our closure is going to um, actually do the work for us and it's going to do the work on I. And then the next thing I need to do, which the error message is basically just saying that I need to return something. Yep, I need a return. So what I'm going to do return is the running total. Okay. So the first thing, the first example is I actually want to know um, the sum of the first five squares. And so what I will do is I will call our sum function. As you see, we have the setup here. As I mentioned before, Swift 3 actually prefers you bring in the first parameters label, which is great, which is exactly what I'm going to do. And so I'm going to have it begin at 1 and then end at 5, because I want the sum of the first five squares. And, but instead of using closure on, which I could, I could definitely do what I've done before, which is to include the closure inside the parentheses, I'm actually going to just completely delete that. And then actually do the closure outside. So again, trailing closure. And so with the squares, what I'm basically going to do is actually only accept one parameter coming in, um, where it's going to do work, because I want one times one, two times two, Etc. So I only need to specify one argument. So I'm going to do shorthand dollar sign zero times dollar sign zero. And I should get a result, which I do. I'm actually going to add this to here so you can see that what it does is it does the multiplication. So we go one times one equals one. This should be two times two, which equals four. Three times three equals nine. Four times four equals 16. If I can click on it. <laughs> and then this last one should be 25. Well, it should be, but I can't seem to get it to click. But you, you get the point. Um, but let's see what the sum is actually so actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this equal to a variable and this is going to be sum five square and let's go ahead and have it tell us what it is it should be 55 and it is so there we go that's as a trailing closure so our closure is outside of the function's parameters when we call it. Let's do one more example. So I think having more than one is great. So let's do sum of the first 10 numbers. Ah, 
let's do first 15 because I like to have fun. <laughs> Alright, so I'm actually going to assign the result of the sum to a variable like I did above. But you can do exactly what I did before where I just called the function, seen the, what it was doing, and then made it a variable. Totally up to you. I'm just making this a little bit quicker. So I'm going to do sum of 15 numbers equals, do sum, do begin, end, I'm going to do 1 to 10, I'm going to delete, oopsie, I'm going to delete all this here, and then do the trailing closure afterwards. And so here, all I want to do is actually have it add up only one number. There's no computation. There's no computer. There's no math involved. Uh, unlike what was up here, where I multiplied it, the number by itself. I'm actually just sending one number in. So I'm going to do dollar sign zero. So there's only one argument. And I don't know why I did that. Okay, there we go. <laughs> oh, it's a little interesting to say the least. So let's go ahead and see what it, what the function looks like. And so what we should have is one, two, three, four, five, all the way to ten. If I can click on one of these, yep, that's three. And so what it's gonna do is it's gonna add all of it together. So if we call sum of fifteen, we should get fifty-five as well. And again, if you, oh, actually I said 15, so actually that's wrong. There we go. <laughs> Should be 120. All right. So that is trailing closures. So higher order functions. So there's, um, couple of higher order functions that I want to cover. The first one is actually sorted. Um, this sort is actually swift to, so it's actually changed to sorted. And basically what sorted does, as I had mentioned in a pre previous video, that it takes a closure to describe how uh, the function is supposed to sort through something, whether ascending or descending. So I'm just going to do a really quick example so that you can see it in both ways. So let's take, for example, a list of names. I think in my first example it was a list of numbers or game scores. So it's good to see it in a different context. So we're going to actually create an array because as you know, sorted is a function for arrays. So let's go ahead and create um, a couple of names here. A list of names. So do Bob. Mary, well, let's do Xander and uh, Joe and Evie. Why not? Okay, so let's um, sort these list of names in a different way. So let's do uh, sort <coughs> names ascending. So the sorted array, actually its default is ascending. So we actually don't have to enter a closure for ascending if we don't want to. So if I do names sorted, and just do the parentheses, what it'll do is it'll sort the names ascending by default. So if you just want everything that you submit or if you want to use sorted on any array, you just want it to be ascending, you don't necessarily have to enter in a closure to indicate that. But if you want to do descending, you do have to indicate. So let's do name descending, do name sorted, and then we do sorted by. But we actually don't have to necessarily enter in our closure here. If you remember our my example from above where we had uh, trailing closures, we actually add a trailing closure instead. 
and we can actually also use shorthand argument names. So we'll go ahead and do that. So we have dollar sign zero greater than dollar sign one. So we're comparing two argument names and let's see how it does with it. So there we go, we have it sorted. Um, let's make sure, let's go ahead and call that variable just to be certain. Just to be certain. <laughs> okay, um, obviously it's not, there we go. <laughs> Oh, I tell you, so three is kind of slow, but there we go. It is sorted descending. All right, so the next thing we're going to cover is map. So what map does is it transforms an array using a function. It maps the content from one value to another. And what it does is it basically takes a closure expression as its single argument and returns it in an alternate map value of some other different type for that item in a new array. And let me go ahead and show you an example of that. So say if we have an array, do what digit name, and we're going to list a couple of digits. This is going to actually be a dictionary. So we're going to do zero, oopsie, zero, and then the name, its name, which is zero. And we'll do number one, and then it's name one, two, and the uh, say two, and the name two, and we'll do one more for three. All right. And then we're going to have another uh, uh, actual array. So the first one was in the dictionary. This one's going to be an array. And this array is going to basically just be a number of array of num well, an array of numbers, I should say. So three and zero. Okay. So how we use map is say if I wanted to change this array to actually instead of having uh, the numbers I actually have the string version of these numbers instead. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to map the contents of this array and convert it to a different type based off of, uh, of the value that is submitted. So let's go ahead and create a constant and do number names. I'm not sure why this is airing out. Let's do numbers, sorry. Let's see if that makes a difference. Okay, makes a little bit of difference. Right, so we're gonna do let number name equal, we'll do numbers.map. And then we will enter in our closure. So in this case, what I wanted to do is one, I wanted to bring in number, so numbers. And then I want to output a string. I'll go ahead and do in. Not index in. Oh my goodness. This is just giving me issues. All right. In. All right. Okay, and then we do var, and then we're going to do our output. And I'm just going to make it equal to nothing inside of it, so that it's a string. It will type it, it'll infer its type that it is actually a string. We do output equals digit name. brackets, number, and we're going to unwrap it, plus the output, and then we're going to return the output. So basically what I'm calling is when I bring in a number, 
from my array, what it will do is the I'll have digit name pull that number because the number is a key, and then what it will output is the value for that key. Actually, it's supposed to be numbers. Okay, and then let's go ahead and see what number name outputs. Okay, so we have one, two, three, and zero, which is exactly the same um, input that we put in. So we've successfully exchanged one type for another based off of a dictionary using map. So that's a great example. I think another um, example um, that I want to also mention is just something a little different. So just as a note, um, I did use the Coco library. So if you scroll up to the very top, make sure that you import Coco for this section. So once you have import Coco inserted, let's go ahead and scroll down to the example. So this example is just going to take something a little bit different. What I'm going to do is I'm basically going to import a text field into Playground. So there's some preliminary foundational setup that I have to do. So let's go ahead and do a variable. I'm going to call this my label. So we're going to actually create a label. And since we're not in Xcode creating an app, we actually have to specify a couple of things. So first of all, we need to bring in NS text field. And again, if you have any questions about what NS text field, go ahead and hold down your option key and click on NS text field and it will tell you what it is. So basically, it's a control. It's a kind of control that displays text that the user can select or edit and it sends an action message to its target. So that's what I'm bringing in. Now the thing is, is because I'm not bringing it in using um, a GUI or graphical interface, I actually have to program the setup of this text field. So go ahead and enter a parentheses. Um, in order to create our text field, we need to actually specify the frame. So the actual rectangle and frame brings in NSRect, so it actually will say, hey, I need to I need you to specify what this rectangle is. So go ahead and type in NSRect and parentheses. And again, if you're not sure what NSRect is, go ahead and hold down the option to eight key and click on it, and we'll tell you what it is. So NSRect is equal to G C G rect, basically represents a rectangle. All right. So I'm going to actually delete that and bring it in so I can have my drop down. I'm going to select the integer version. So I'm going to set the origin, which is X and Y, and then specify the width and height of the rectangle. So the origin is just going to be at zero for this rectangle. I'm going to set the width uh, with some random numbers. Basically, I'm going to have the width at 200 and the height at 50, just to make it look like a regular rectangle. And once this goes here, what we can do is we can actually see that we do have a, a text field here. Um, the thing is, though, I, I can't really see this rectangle very well because it's white. So I'm actually going to specify the background color for my label. So go ahead and type in my label dot background color. Now my label has, you know, quite a few, you know, different methods and things like that that we can use but i'm actually just going to do black background background color and in order to specify background color what i need to do is i need to bring in ns color now with ns color i would type in ns color dot i'm going to choose purple and there we go we should have a purple label now and we do that's awesome but say if I want to, you know, have different kinds of backgrounds for my label. Well, what I can do is I can create a dictionary. So let's go ahead and do that. Where we have different colors. And I'm going to say color names. Because say I don't want to type in NS color every time to change the color of my 
the background color of my text field. So I, I'm going to use a dictionary in order to make this a little bit easier to use. So say I'm going to have the background color of red, and then I can do ms color red, and let's do blue, and do ns color blue, and we'll do one more, do uh, yellow. You can choose a different color if you want, or add another color. Oopsie, don't do equal sign, because we're doing a dictionary. So we need key, and then value, so ns color yellow. Okay. Now say I just want to, you know, call or change the color strings. So we have, I have a list of color strings that I want to specify, but I don't want to, you know, again, type in NS color red or blue or whatever, because as you see here, we have the RGBA color code here for, oh gosh, doesn't show it, but <laughs> if I pull this out here, you can see that for blue, NS color red actually imports the RGBA code. So I don't really necessarily want the, R, R, the RGBA codes. I just want to say, hey, I want you to choose this instead of typing all that out. So, all right, so I'm going to create a, a array here. And I'm going to do red, and then blue, and then yellow. So basically what I want to do is I want to create another array, but this time have the, the map function change these strings into the actual color code. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's go ahead and create a constant, let colors equal color strings, and we'll do dot map. And then we do our closure. Now in here, I want to specify that I want to bring in the string names, and then I want to output NS color. So we'll do NS string names and output NS color. And we'll do the in keyword. And now let's go ahead and create a quick variable here for the output. So because I'm not going to set our output to, I'm not going to infer the type, I'm actually going to tell it that this type is NS color. So there's really no way for me to, I mean, I guess I could put um, an RGBA code in there and have it infer that. It's just easier just to specify the type at this point instead of giving it a default value or starting value. All right, so when the output comes in, what I mean, when the color name comes in, what I want it to do is I want to have output equal the value up here. So as I bring in red, it's going to look up here in my dictionary and say, okay, here's the key red. The value I need to assign to output is NS color red or the RGBA um, values. All right, so we do color names, and then we bring in the key, which will be string names. And I actually I believe I have to unwrap this. Yes, because because at this point it's an optional type, so we can either say okay, yes, unwrap it or no, don't, or no, let's have it have the, the question mark. But I, I know when I submit this in or when I enter it in, if it's going to unravel, there's not going to be any issues. So I'm just going to use the exclamation point. And then what I want to do is I want it to return the output. Okay, so let's see if our new, um, 
our new array, which should be now the codes uh, that we specified. So it should be in this order. All right, so let's go ahead and do my label. And let's change our background color now to output or show the color based off of our new array that we mapped to. So we do colors and then the first, the very first one is zero, so it should be red or not. Oops, okay, not dot notation, <laughs> do brackets. That's right, it's an array. Right, now let's take a look at our new text field. Oh my gosh, and it's red. Now I know the second one is blue, so I can change this to one, it should turn to blue. And it's blue. And then I can do this third one, which is yellow. All right, so there you go. Another example of mapping um, with a different type. <laughs> so instead of using I did up here with numbers, with integers, I've done with a totally different type and that's color. Now I'm going to actually switch back to my prior old video, uh, which I will be covering filter and reduce and a couple more examples because it still applies to Swift 3. So filter basically selects elements of an array that satisfies a certain condition. It's really similar to map, um, but basically it takes an instance of array type and it takes a closure as an argument in order to filter that array. So let's jump right on in. So I'm going to create a, an array here of, um, I'm just going to go back to uh, game scores. So I'm going to create another uh, list of game scores. So let's just add some random numbers here. Oops, I did exactly the same thing. Okay, and let's do one more. Okay, so here's my random list of game scores. And so with filter, we let, let's let's just filter out something, okay? So let's say we want to see all game scores that are above um, a thousand. All right. So let's do let game um, let scores greater. Then 1000, and then we're going to take an array. So we do game scores list, filter, and our closure. Okay, so what we're going to do is um, filter takes in an integer and outputs a boolean. So that's exactly what we're going to do. So we do score int so that I mean our scores coming in or the arrays coming in um, is of type int and it's going to output a boolean in and then we do bar sorted oh see no we're going to return sorry we're going to return our scores so we are going to type in score is greater than 1,000. Oops, it would help if I put an equal sign there. Okay, so we see our list of scores that are above 1,000, which is awesome. Now we can shorten this again, or we can refactor this. Make some more space here. 
So let's refactor it. So we do, um, I'm just going to copy this name. I'm just going to type in refactor. So we can do game score list dot filter. Now, if you remember our shorthand, we can use um, our dollar sign zero so that we're going to compare our first argument coming in and see if it's greater than zero. So we're going to completely do away with all of this and it should output what we wanted to output. So let's do score greater than zero or greater than thousand refactor. And sure enough, it equals exactly the same as up here. And you notice instead of having this really long uh, closure here, we've shortened it up using shorthand. Okay. So I'm going to do one more example, but this time let's combine sort with filter. So let's um, filter um, for the top three scores. I'm going to be using sort as well. So I'm going to do let top three scores. And if you want to type, if you want to type this out or try to figure it out by yourself, pause the video. Let's see if you can figure it out. Otherwise, if you're ready, um, I'm going to go ahead and continue on. So I'm going to bring in my list of game scores. So game scores list. And I'm going to do a filter like I did before. Do our closure. I'm going to do this in the long, long version. So again, I'm going to bring my scores in, which are of type int. This is going to output a boolean. So it's either going to be yes or no. Whether one's, one is meets the criteria. All right, and then. I'm going to do bar sorted. So I'm going to create a variable here that is going to be equal to my game score list sorted. Now I don't want to do ascending. I want to do descending. So I'm going to do another closure in here. It's going to sort my scores descending. Okay, so now my scores are coming in descending. And then what I want it to do is I want it to return um, scores that are going to be, so the top three. So because everything's sorted out, you can assume that the fourth, um, the score that is in place or in the third place is going to be lower than the other two because I've already sorted, right? So I'm going to do greater than my sorted array. Um, and the value at place three or the fourth place. Because if I pull this out here, I'll just go ahead and pull it out. and look at sorted, you'll see that this is sorted from the largest score to the high, or the highest score to the smallest score. So what I'm doing is I'm saying, since I know that the value at four is going to be lower than th uh, the third and second and the first, than anything greater than 700, which in this case is 700, is going to output. And that's what I did. No, I'm not there might be an easier way to do this. And that's just one of the ways I decided to do it. So <laughs> um, hopefully that's, that's helpful as to why I did it that way. Okay. So fun times. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is reduce. So with reduce, 
um, basically it combines the value of an array into a single value. Okay, so um, the best way to show you this is just to show you. So I'm going to create a, uh, an array here. Um, let's have words. And because I'm silly, I'm just going to put this. <laughs> so, uh, swift to is flipping fun with Johnny. Because <laughs> I'm silly. All right. So I have my list of words. Now what I want to do is I want to take this array of words and make it into a string that looks like a sentence. Okay? So I can do this with, with reduce. So um, I'm going to create a variable here. It's going to be sentence. I want to bring in my words array. And I'm going to do reduce. And this is going to be basically a string. So I'm going to state, okay, there's going to be a string coming in. And now I want it to look at each item in the array. And then if it contains a, a string, if it contains something, then it's going to change the format. So I'm going to do if, I'm going to do shorthand here. So if um, the first argument comes in, if it equals nothing, so it has nothing in it, I just want you to return the next one. So return the second argument. I don't want you to do anything. But if you, if it doesn't, if it actually contains something, what I want it to do is have a, a new format. So I want to have a word come in, then I want it to concatenate to a space, and then also concatenate it to the next value. That makes sense. Okay, so what it should have done is it should have looked at Swift and seen, okay, there is Swift there, therefore I'm going to return that. I'm going to look at the second one and say, does this equal this, and then I'll just keep going on from there. And then if I look at sentence, this should output the string, which it does. Okay, so that is reduce. Now, um, well, I'm going to do one more example of reduce, just so that it makes sense, and just because of practice is always good. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to find the largest number, or largest score, or actually I should say the highest score, from the, uh, the score array above. So I'm going to do let max score equal game score list. And I'm going to say um, reduce. And I want it to start at um, the first first value. So start at zero. So the initial value. So I'm going to do a game score at zero. So you start at the first, the first element in that array. And then what I want you to do is to compare it to every other value and output the one that is the highest. And I'm going to do this in really really shorthand. So I'm going to do if the first value is greater than 
the second value. Then I want you to output the first value. Otherwise, output the second value. Okay. Okay, I've got a wonderful error. What did I do wrong? Oops. <laughs> Game score list. <laughs> That's what I was supposed to do. Nope. Did I make a mistake here? Okay, I did. <laughs> All right, so if we look at max score, it should be like the 12, yep, 12,000 one. All right, now um, I know this, this is kind of funky and I had to actually look this up. So if you hold down the option key, your little pointer will turn to a plus, hover over reduce, click on it. We can actually look at reduce. So reduce is a sequence type. So if we scroll up to reduce, let's just see if we can find it in here. So reduce combined. So Basically, it is a type that can be iterated with a for in loop. So basically, it does this in iteration. Um, let's see if I can try to find it real quick. Scrolling up starts with split. So you see, there's many higher order functions. That's what I was saying. And there's our sort. So our sort is an array. It returns an array containing a sort elements of source according to is ordered before. So here's the declaration um, with reduce. So what it does is it returns a result of repeatedly calling combine uh, with accumulated value initialized to initial and each element of self in turn. So when I said for it to start at zero, it's basically saying init it's, I'm, I'm initializing it to start at the first value. So that's why it's a little odd, especially with up here. I'm like, okay, well, why would you do this notation? Because I'm telling it to start at the beginning. Same thing with this array. I'm telling it to start at zero, so the first element. All right, so that's that. So if you want to end this video, you can, but I'm going to go in, into a little bit more detail and show you some more examples um, because I, I think it's helpful to have more examples and I really wanted to kind of have fun with this and to really dive in there uh, and if you want to you can join me all right so what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually going to find all the sums of squares for all the odd numbers of a, an array of numbers and then print it out using map, reduce, and filter. So I'm going to use try to use all three of those to find the sum of squares. Okay, so I'll create some space here. And then I'm going to refactor and then refactor again using shorthand parameter names. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and create, I'm going to create an array. So I'm going to create an array. I'm just gonna call it some numbers. And then I'm going to just type in some numbers here that I can use. Um, let's do 30, 19, 23, and 12, why not? you have some odd numbers in there. So if you want to try figuring this out for yourself, again, definitely pause this video and try to work through this using map, reduce, and filter. Now, when I when I have a problem such as this, uh, it's just really best to start really small and think of what the first step would be. Well, first of all, I, I believe I want to filter out all the numbers that are odd. So I think that's going to be the best way to work with us. So I'm going to create a new array. So I'm going to do var 
filtered numbers. Let's do filter num. Let's do numbers shortened. So I'm going to take in my my numbers array. Actually, I'm going to rename this. So I think it's a little bit better if I do like numbers. Do just numbers. There we go. Shortened. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to take in my numbers array and I'm going to filter them. And I'm going to do my trailing closure. And I want to have it bring in an int. So the numbers are coming in are all integers. And then it's going to output a Boolean do in and what's going to return is whether they're odd or even and um, the way to do that is to use modulus 2 so if 2 is divided by the number if it's even the remainder should be 0 if it's not even then it's odd so I'm going to say if the number modulus 2 is not equal to 0 then that's what I want it to return because I want to bring out all the odd numbers. And sure enough, we have all of our odd numbers um, from our array. Then the next thing I want to do, I want to um, get the square of my odd numbers. So I'm going to go ahead and remap um, my, my numbers because I want to get the squares of my filtered numbers. So I'm going to do map numbers and I'm going to bring in my filtered numbers. I do map and again I'm going to do my trailing closure. And now I want to, it's going to bring in um, a number and it's going to return an int. So I'm going to do number, return an integer, in. And then I want it to return uh, the square. So it's going to be number times number. And that should create my new array of squared odd numbers. So here's my, my original filter numbers, 3, 5, 9, etc. 3 times 3 is 9, 5 times 5 is 25, so on and so forth. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to create the sum. So I want it to add all of my squared numbers. So let's do ahead and do var reduced numbers and this time I want to take in my map numbers that I did up here and I want to combine them all. So I'm going to reduce I want you to start at zero and delete all of this and do my closure and then here I want to say okay bring in um, two numbers so, and, as my parameters, so or bring in two parameters, both of type int. And I want you to return an int, which will be our sum. In, and you return. Now again, the sum is what um, i plus j, and that is one thousand five. And if you do this math up here, you will see it does most likely <laughs> equal that. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it does. Okay. So let's refactor this. Now, um, what I want to do is I want to start from up here 
can just do the fill. Actually, I want to start from up here to filter numbers, but not have all these extra variables. So um, let's go ahead and do or let sum equal. I'm going to start at numbers. So I'm bringing in my, my original array up here, down here. And then I'm going to do filter. So I'm going to do my, my filter first. Okay. And then I want to, after my filter, I want to do my map. And again, do our um, closure. And then after my map, I want to do reduce. So I'm just type in reduce. And with reduce, I want to make sure that I bring in, you know, initialize it first, and then it will also have its closure. And I'm going to actually break this up a little bit. So it's a little bit cleaner. Okay. So my filter, um, what was my original filter? Well, it was originally num int. So I'm copying it from above. And it's going to return a boolean in. And it's going to return my number modulus 2 not equal to 0. And then my map up here, I have a number coming in and it's going to return an int in. And it's going to return uh, the number times itself. And then my reduce takes in two numbers, or two parameters of type int, and then returns an int, so the sum, in, and return i plus j. All right, and then if we call sum, we will see that it equals the 1005 that we had up here. Now we can refactor this again, which is just crazy. So this time I'll go ahead and do the shorthand parameter names. So I'm going to do let shorthand sum equal. I'm going to bring in my numbers array to filter. Trailing closure. I'm going to do the first parameter or the first value modulus 2 and not equal to 0. Return, do map. And with map, we multiplied it by itself, so 0 times 0, and then I did reduce, initial 0, and then Add the first to the second, okay. So if we call our short hand sum, it should equal uh, 1005. So there we go. I covered quite a bit in this video. Um, if you stayed with me the whole entire time, <laughs> awesome. You are awesome. But basically I covered quite a bit. Um, I covered trailing closures, uh, the syntax, some examples, and then I covered higher order functions. So sort, map, reduce, and filter. 
as well as some extensive examples combining a lot of them together. So hopefully you found this fun. Um, hopefully it was helpful to you. If you if it was extremely helpful, please like my video. Um, if you, you know, like all my videos, awesome. Please subscribe. And uh, till next time.